वेलकम टू अवर लेटेस्ट वीडियो वेर वी डीप डाइव इन टू द रेलम ऑफ चैट बॉट्स एंड देर रिवोल्यूशनरी इम्पैक्ट ऑन बिजनेस जस्ट इमेजिन अ चैट बॉट दैट कैन एफिशियंटली हैंडल न्यूमरस कस्टमर क्वेरीज विद मिनिमल ह्यूमन इंटरवेंशन इट साउंड इनक्रेडिबल डेट हाउ एवर कंस्ट्रक्टिंग सच अ रोबर्स चैट बॉट कम्स विद इट्स ओन यूनिक सेट ऑफ चैलेंजेस द कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी एंड डायवर्सिटी ऑफ ह्यूमन लैंग्वेज आर ट्रूली एस्टॉनिशिंग When we write, we often make spelling errors, use abbreviations, and omit punctuations. The abundance of unstructured data surrounding us poses a significant hurdle. Fortunately, natural language processing comes to the rescue by enabling computers to communicate in human language and tackle various language-related tasks on a large scale. NLP allows computers to read text, interpret its meaning, gauge sentiment, and identify crucial components. Understanding these concepts. forms the foundation for building the central component of any conversational chatbot in this particular nlp application we will construct the core engine of a chatbot by utilizing the nltk library we will explore text classification techniques within the domain of natural language processing before we begin make sure to hit that subscribe button as we will be uploading similar projects every week at the end i will share with you a great tip to get access to more than 250 plus ai and machine learning libraries with instructor demonstration and full understanding of the concept In this video we will demonstrate how we leverage internal customer support data to construct a powerful chatbot using NLTK and we will implement that in Python for this project we will utilize the python language along with popular libraries such as pandas numpy NLTK and many more believe me this is all you need to build an exceptional chatbot next we will look into the implementation of the chatbot using python i am going to go through each line of code line by line The Python script starts by importing various libraries and modules required for text processing and data analysis. The NLTK library is used for natural language processing task and the NLTK download popular downloads popular data sets and resources used by the NLTK library. So these are the various libraries that have been imported. The next two lines allows displaying multiple outputs in the same cell of a Jupyter notebook and these lines suppress warnings generated during the execution of the script. These lines configure the display options for Pandas data frame allowing the display of all columns and rows without truncation. Now let's move on to the pre-processing part. For pre-processing we have taken two sentences. The first one is the short one and the second one is a long text. These samples line of codes converts the sentence string to lower case using the lower method. In the next part we will look into the tokenization and extraction of individual words. These lines of code creates a tokenizer object using the regex expression tokenizer class from nltk.tokenize module. The tokenizer is initiated with the regular expression pattern. This pattern matches one or more alphanumeric characters like letters, digits and underscores. and at the end it prints the tokens list which contains the individual words or tokens extracted from the sentence string after this the code removes the non useful words using the stop words to do that here is an example of how to remove stop words the code creates a new list filtered underscore words by iterating over each tokens w in the token and token to list and filtering out the stop words the resulting list contains the tokens that are not stop words Next in order to convert sentences to lower case and tokenize them individually we have created a preprocess function that takes the sentence as input within the function the sentence is converted to lower case using the lower method then a tokenizer object is created and the sentence is tokenized using the regular expression tokenizer method then you can call the preprocess function with the sentence as input and assign the return list of filtered words to the variable preprocess and it prints the preprocess list Now let's look at how tagging works for a sentence using NLTK. So we can assign parts of speech tags to the pre-processed text in that sentence using NLTK.POS tag function. The pre-process function is called to pre-process the sentence and obtain the filtered list. Then the POS tag function assigns part of the speech tags to each word in the filtered words and then you can print the tags. You can look at the output over here. Some are nouns, some are verbs, etc. You can refer to the POS tag list over here. For example, JJ is adjective, RB is adverb, etc. Now we will extract only nouns and verbs from the sentence because nouns and verbs will have most contextual meanings. This function extracts nouns and noun verbs. 
In the next line, we have lemmatization. This method reduces each word to its base or dictionary form. The next line defines a list of words that will be stemmed. List comprehension is used to iterate over each word and applying stemming using the stem method of Snowball Stemmer class. Now it's time to put all of them together in a single definition of a function. So this code defines a function called extract feature that takes a text as input. Within the function, the preprocess obtains the filtered words. The NLTK POS tag function is used to assign parts of speech tags. The extract tag function is used to extract words based on specific parts of speech tags from the tagged words and finally the stem words are limitized. The limitization is performed using this list comprehension. Now let's see how we can implement bag of words. In simple terms, it's a collection of words to represent a sentence disregarding the order in which they appear. With that, let's parse the whole document. Now the training dataset which we will use over here is a corpus of transcript. This dataset actually has corpus of leaves data which is present in this format. Now let's look at our training data. This is a document which is the training data. This document actually has a chat conversation with a chatbot named Dexter. We will try to train our chatbot using this corpus of data. Let's see how it behaves. This function over here takes a list of data entries as input. It initializes an empty list result to store the processed entry, an empty list corpus to store the extracted feature from each entry, and an empty dictionary answers to store the corresponding answers for each category. The code then iterates over each entry in the data list. It lets the extract feature function to extract features from the text using the previously explained process. The extracted feature are added to the corpus list and the tuple containing the feature is converted to a dictionary and the categories appended to the result list. Additionally, the corresponding answers for each category is stored in the answers dictionary. You can see how it works over here. Now it's time to take the file as input and read the contents of the file. The resulting filtered lines are returned as a data list. So this is how the data looks from the file. So this code over here demonstrates the usage of the function by passing the data list obtained from the file. Reading the resulting tuple containing feature data, corpus and answers is unpacked into separate variables. Now with this, it's time to train the model. The code sets the split ratio to 0.8 indicating that 80% of the data will be used for training and 20% for testing. The resulting training and the test sets are assigned to the variable training data and test data. Let's classify the data using decision tree. So this is the function which trains the decision tree with entropy cutoff is equals to 0.6 and support cutoff is equals to 6. 0.6 is the minimum entropy required for further splitting and 6 specifies the maximum number of samples required for a leaf. You can see the training set accuracy is 0.9 and test set accuracy is 0.86. Let's classify this using nave base. In the nave base model, the training set accuracy comes out to be 0.83 and the test set accuracy comes out to be 0.82. Now we will use this trained classifier to classify a sample input represented as a feature set. At the end, these lines of code demonstrate the usage of the reply function by passing different input sentences. The function is called with each input sentence and it returns the corresponding answers based on the predicted category. Once the model has been deployed using an algorithm, this model can be used using any chatbot UI framework. Comment below if you want to see a UI framework integration. And that's it. Congratulations. You have successfully created a chatbot. But wait, before we end, what if I tell you that you can have access to 250 plus ready-made artificial intelligence and machine learning project solutions all at one place? And not only that, 15 plus new projects are added every month. Feels unbelievable, right? Well, that's possible using Project Pro. It's a user-friendly platform that streamlines the process of building projects, making it more efficient and enjoyable. With Project Pro, you can effortlessly create impressive AI and ML projects that will truly enhance your resume. Be sure to check out Project Pro's solution. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching and remember, the revolution starts now. Stay tuned for more exciting content. Until then, keep innovating and keep pushing the boundaries. Catch you again in the next video.